Hello, and welcome to Counseling Techniques, mini episode one. I'm Dr. Amber Hughes. What I've decided to do is, so I created those um, counseling technique episodes and they were longer and really in depth, right? Um, so to fill in kind of the gaps in between those episodes, I decided to just record short mini episodes. These are unscripted, no PowerPoints, just me talking at you like I would if I had you in a face-to-face -face class. So there are some things that I realize that I say over and over in my face-to-face -face classes, like things that I think that are just super important um, that you're not getting. Um, and we would not want to deprive you of some of the things that are going on in my head, right? <laughs> so here it is, less than 10 minutes, okay? Um, each one will coincide with a little bit with the chapter that I either skipped or I only touched on briefly in the in the um, longer episode. OK, um, if you want an idea of what it's like to have me in class, um, you might take some of these and play them a couple times a week because I know I repeat these over and over again. All right. Just because I think they're that important. So in this one, I want to talk about power differentials in the counseling relationship. OK. Um, and Ivy talks about this in the textbook a little bit. Um, and this is something that I think is super important, especially when we're working with um, uh, certain populations. So on a side note, before I get started, I realize you can see the mess that is my room behind me and I could clean it up or try and do like a br backdrop of some sort. Um, but this is my life and um, you get to see a little picture of it. The the exercise, well, uh, wrong side, exercise equipment over here, the mess over here, the running stroller over there. You can't see the dogs that are under my feet right here, though. Maybe one day I'll show you a picture of them. Um, all right. Anyway, back to power differentials. OK, so what happens in the counseling relationship is we start off with a power differential because we are in a position of power um, just as a counselor. Uh, so most people come into counseling not knowing what to expect. Um, and if you think about it, especially in certain, you know, certain areas, certain um, uh, populations, um, you're coming in with someone who has a good education, um, who is in an office, who dresses professionally or semi-professionally. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I say that because I know I don't dress super professionally either. Um, but we, you know, we, we certainly try and match our population with our dress, I know. Um, but likely you're dressing more professionally than your client, right? Um, and so we're starting off with this difference of power here where we're a little bit up here and our clients are down here. Now that, so our goal as counselors is to decrease that difference. Okay, we want to be as equal as possible. Depending on your theoretical orientation, you may want to keep a little bit of power difference. So if you're coming in as like a psychoanalytic theorist or even just like a cognitive behavioral, um, you may want to be a little more equal, but you still are kind of taking that expert role. So it's okay to have a little bit of a power differential, power differential there for some theoretical orientations. Now, if you're person-centered, you're coming down here, maybe even trying to get a little lower. If you're like a re relational cultural, um, you're coming down here trying to get a little lower, okay, where we're trying to really um, bring the client as the expert. So we're trying to bring them up a bit. Now, that power difference increases with uh, culture, okay? Um, so if you are white, then we have this say here's okay so i'm just totally making these up right um but we have this difference here if you're white and your client's white it's going to stay the same if you're white and your client's black if you're white and your client's hispanic right so with when you're working with minority clients we're going to increase that power difference okay so it's going to be a little bit more work to try and decrease it right um if you are let's let's go back up here to around normal. Um, so if you are, um, let's say a woman and you are counseling women, it's going to stay the same. If you are a woman and you are counseling men, that's where it gets a little weird, at least in my experience. Um, not always, not always. Okay. Where it has been more of an experience with me is when things like education come into play. Um, so me and age, especially when I was younger. So when I was younger, I was young, I was a woman, I had a master's degree. Um, this was when I was doing my counseling and 
Um, if I would have a man come in and he was older than me, uh, and he, uh, I remember one guy in particular who, um, who was struggling to get his bachelor's degree. He was really having a hard time finishing school. Um, and so that power difference really, really was hard for him. I think, I think he recognized the power difference, but it was really challenging so much so that we couldn't get past it to build rapport. Okay, so it can, so the gender thing can, in my experience, be a little bit challenging when it comes to, to power because, right, so we've got, you know, again, we have that difference with counseling where the counselor's up here, client's down here, um, and if you're a woman uh, counseling a man, that, that should actually bring it down a little bit, which isn't a bad thing. Okay, um, but if you have a man who's used to being in a more a, a, a position of power over women, um, it can be a challenge for them to adjust to the idea of having a woman counselor. Again, this is just certain populations. This is not all men in particular, you know, in, in general, right? I'm not generalizing here. Um, it is something that we want to consider. Gender is always an issue, right? Um, and so we want to consider those types of things. If you are, um, so things like sexual orientation, those things aren't easily seen. And so likely your clients are going to assume that you are of the majority, even if you aren't. So they're going to assume that you are straight. Um, and so that uh, if you have a, a client who's LGBTQ, um, they're going to maybe make the assumption you're straight. And so that's going to increase that power differential a little bit. Okay. Um, and so you're going to have to work a little bit harder to bring it back down right? Unless you have indications in your office that you are a safe zone. Um, so these are things to consider, right? And, and then the next step is how. How do we bring that power differential down? So we talk about it. We talk about culture. We talk about what it means to the client. Um, it's up to us as the counselor, especially if we are a counselor in a position of um, power in terms of culture. So if you're white, if you're a man, if you are um educated, which you all are because you're counselors, um, it's your responsibility to bring up the discussion of culture. Okay. So talk about things, ask questions, um, make this, make your room or your relationship, the place where it's okay to have these conversations. Um, tell me what it's like to be you. Um, tell me about your culture. So say those words, ask those questions. Um, it's not going to offend anyone because you're asking about them and you're showing interest and you're saying, yes, culture is something that's important. And I'm going to ask you about it because you may not be comfortable bringing it up. And so it's on me to bring it up. Okay. It may be uncomfortable for you as the counselor to bring it up and that's fine. Um, but it's your responsibility to overcome that discomfort and have that conversation. The more you do it, the easier it gets. With certain populations, it's easier. I've tended to work with adolescents and it's super easy to have those conversations with them. Most of the time they brought it up to me um, and I joked about it. I was silly. I used humor. I was working with at-risk populations. So they were in um, uh, juvenile delinquent centers. They were on probation. Um, they were talking about things like the popo and they were talking about gangs. Popo is police. And I would use their language and I would do so in a way that was kind of goofy. Um, so that built rapport, right? Because they thought I was silly and goofy and they were comfortable talking to me about those things, right? So there's different ways you can do it. You can be yourself. Um, the comfort level will come the more you have those conversations. Uh, but it is on you to have those conversations. It is on you, the counselor, to decrease that power differential and to really use, and, and honestly, just using these counseling techniques helps decrease that power differential, but you need to do so intentionally and you can do so through starting the conversation about culture and making sure that your client knows this is a place to talk about it. Thanks for listening.